Welcome into our painting tutorial. My name is Erin. I go by Erin Bun Paints Online, as you probably know if you're here watching me on Twitch, where I do these painting tutorials live for free. Uh, welcome in, everybody, and I'm saying hi to YouTube as well, because I do post these tutorials to YouTube. So whether you're watching live or watching um, recorded on YouTube, I appreciate you being here and hope you have some fun with painting. Have some good time. Have some fun. Uh, today we're painting. Uh, the painting you can see uh, beside me here. It's just a nice little like snowy cabin vibe. Um, I wanted to do something that wasn't your typical, just like white snow, um, you know, a couple trees. I wanted it just a different color palette with some blues with this nice like maroon here, the oranges and yellows, very warm in a cold environment. Um, and I think we got that pretty well with this. So let me switch you over to my view here where you can see the original painting. Uh, and the idea with tutorials, in case anyone is maybe joining for the first time or is watching my video for the first time, is I teach them step by step uh, with my own painting or with my own canvas as well. So you can see the original painting here, but I'm actually going to be uh, painting along with you on my own blank canvas as well. So you can see the reference up here. Oh, I'm playing with some stuff here as well. Um, up above me, you can see the reference and that'll stay there the whole tutorial. So if you want to look at it, you can. And then otherwise you'll see me complete everything step by step with you on my own canvas as well. Um, I try and make these around two hours or so. So uh, hopefully not too much time or maybe um, enough time for you to complete this. If you want to go a little slower, a little faster, please, of course, go at your own pace. If you want to add your own things to the painting, of course, you're more than welcome to do that. This is just kind of like good inspo for for, you know, those who maybe are looking for a tiny bit more direction or just a design to work off of, that was my point in creating this. It should be more of like a beginner friendly uh, design. So those who are maybe a little newer to painting or even just want to expand uh, their painting practice uh, can use this to, in order to do that. Uh, in terms of supplies I use, I always keep those the same. Uh, if you're ever wondering what supplies I use and if you're in chat, Twitch chat right now, you can type exclamation supplies and all the supplies should pop up there. Yes, they do. Uh, I'll be using five paint colors. I'll be using all five of my usual. I use black, white, red, yellow, and blue, phthalo blue. Uh, gamer, hey, gamer mommy, hello. <laughs> uh, yes, you can access the tutorial afterwards. I always upload them to YouTube. Again, if you're watching on YouTube, hello. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I always upload my tutorials onto my YouTube page. There's already um, already around like 80 tutorials there. So if you want more, there's lots there. But yes, otherwise you can access it when I, uh, uh, when I edit the video. Usually I try and do that within a week or so, uh, but sometimes a little longer. So I appreciate everyone's patience. <laughs> Uh, where was I? Supplies, right? The five paint colors, black, white, red, yellow, phthalo, blue. Uh, you can use any blue. I just mentioned phthalo blue because it does give off like a brighter color. Uh, in terms of brushes, I use only three brushes. I have a large flat brush, medium round brush, and small round brush. Again, you can use whatever brushes you like, especially if you've painted before and you know you have certain types or certain shapes that you like. Uh, feel free to incorporate those, but I'll just be using these just for a small variety of shapes and sizes. Uh, otherwise, for supplies, I recommend having a cup of paint water. I just have a big jar here, nothing fancy. Of course, a paint palette to put your paints on. You can use something as simple as a paper plate. You can even use that paper plate over and over again for two and a half years and just keep the same palette. Makes for a good, good weight as well, a good paper weight. Uh, there's also some paper towel beside me, and then I always recommend wearing something that you don't mind getting paint on. Uh, acrylic paint, I usually get it out of stuff as long as you find it while it's still wet, but just in case, you know, you just don't want to be worrying about that while you're in the zone and painting. So whip on something that you don't mind getting some paint on or throw an apron on or something like that, and uh, that'll help with, with the, the potential messiness that can happen. Uh, and I think that's it. It's been a little bit since I've done a tutorial. I took a little bit of a break. So if I'm missing anything, I'm sorry, but I'm always happy to answer questions in chat. So for anyone painting along or even those just kind of watching along who want to learn a bit more about painting, um, always feel free to ask. You can just type in chat. It might take me a minute or two to see the message because I'll be in the middle of painting and uh, instructing, but uh, hold tight and I'll get to every single message that we see in the chat eventually. Cool. All right, uh, we can do our little traditional cheers and then we'll get to painting. All right, the painting, let's do the painting. So again, I'll keep this reference up above me here in the top right corner the whole time. 
Gray, thank you. <laughs> I honestly was going to do that when I was offline because I'm sick of seeing it uh, not with the emotes, the emotes not working or whatever, but thank you. Cheers, that's much more proper. Oops, not a cheers, not a shares. <laughs> there, a nice easy way to cheers in chat. Thank you. Bless you. Um, right, yeah, I was just saying, the reference will stay above me the whole time, so you'll kind of hear me referencing it. You might see my little mouser pointer come over here, just so I can kind of talk and point at things as well. Uh, but we're going to start with the nice background, as we usually do. Usually we start from the background and work our way um, with each step to the foreground. So I'm just going to lay down this, it's actually like a very bluish purple, just to create a lot of darkness in the back. And then we can start to lay down our snow, and I'll teach you about blending all these lovely colors here. So I'm going to start with our nice big flat brush, large flat brush, and I'm going to mix together a large amount of phthalo blue. I'll show you my palette here. A large amount of phthalo blue and just a little bit of red. So I'm adding a little red because as I said, it'll turn it a little more kind of on the purple scale, but I find it also darkens it. See how that's looking a little darker than our just uh, plain blue there? That's why I like it. We just want to darken it a wee bit more so we have a very nice dark background for our highlights and snow to kind of pop off of. Want it to just pop right off. Okay, so I've got that loaded up on my brush and very easy. I'm just going to start sweeping that on along the top, kind of like the top third, I would guess. Maybe about like here. I'm actually going to add a little more red. You can see mine's looking a little just blue. I want it more like a blue purple. So I'm adding a little more red to my mixture and then applying. And that's always something I mention usually at the start as you see me doing it. Um, you can always kind of change your color as you go. So you can see what I'm doing is I'm changing my color on my palette, loading up my brush, and then I'm just kind of sweeping the new color in and around the old one. So that'll kind of mix together and change it. So never feel locked in, you know? If you don't like a color, change it up a little bit on your palette, and then you can... Uh, Again, apply it either on top of or around all the other colors. Blend them together, create a new color. So just sweeping left and right, nothing fancy so far, because this is just the background. And the edges, good for me, I remembered. <laughs> I always preach doing the edges and then I always forget to do them myself. So the edges as in the very side of the canvas here, like I'm literally wiping the side, the very top. I always recommend doing that just to complete the entire painting. It's obviously not required. Nothing is. Nothing is really required in painting. If you got the supplies, you can do really whatever you want. And just continuing to fill up this one area here. The other great thing about acrylic paint is it dries pretty fast. So if you're ever filling up an area like I am now, like this kind of sky or background, and you're like, hmm, I don't know how far to bring it down. Like maybe I've brought it down enough. I'm not sure. Maybe I need a little more. Always do a little more. Always do a little more because you can always stack other colors on top of the previous color. So if you're like roughly a third of the way down, you're not quite sure if it's enough, just bring it down a little bit more. There's really no harm that can do. You can always just let it dry, which takes like five to ten minutes, and then you can stack a new color on top or any foreground item on top, which we will be doing once this dries. All right, you can see me just kind of sweeping left and right with my brush, kind of smoothing everything out. Just a light touch to try and get it as smooth as possible. Okay, and I'll just leave it there for a minute or two in case anyone's catching up on that first step. And excuse me a minute.
Whenever you're done with a step, I always recommend washing off your brush. I try my best to uh, remember to remind everybody to wash off their brush before steps, before new colors. Uh, but as a habit, I would say if you're done with a color or done with kind of a, a step or a section, just like put your brush in that water, mix it around a bit, get the paint off. That also guarantees that the paint's not going to dry on the brush as well, because that's never fun. We don't want to have to try and get like dried plasticky acrylic paint off of our nice brushes. So try and keep them uh, relatively clean here and there if you can. And just as a heads up, the next section is going to be um, just the start of the snowy section here. So we have kind of this lighter, uh, not even a teal, it's kind of like a, a dirty blue almost. It's kind of an interesting mix of colors, which I'll tell you about in a second. Uh, we're going to start with this blue here. It gets a little lighter up top, of course, but it's all pretty much a similar blue. So we're starting with blue. And then I'll teach you how to blend into this nice kind of maroon color, the orange, and eventually the yellow to get some nice warmth in there. Okay. So yes, that blue, a little bit of an interesting blue. It's not quite just phthalo blue and white. Um, what I did to make this color, again, I call it kind of a, a dirty blue. Dirty, it's almost like muted. I guess muted might be a better word as well. Uh, what I did is I actually added both black and white to my blue. So that way I'm kind of muting it a bit by adding the black and then I can use the white to lighten it for the nice highlights a little more on top here or just closer to the light source, which is that nice window. So I'll show you my palette as I do that here. Let me spin you around. So that was our purple we were working with. So I'm just gonna take a nice big blob of blue. Again, this is mostly blue. You're just using black and white to um, change the change the shade a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna start by adding a little black because that's what's going to, I'm gonna call it mute the blue. It's going to make it a little dirtier looking, just a little less like electric, a little less bright. In the camera, it does look pretty similar to our purple, but it is different. It is different. You'll see, especially when you add the white to it, you'll see it kind of change up. So this looks pretty dark right now. Um, and we can start with this, especially on the bottom, but I just want to show you what it looks like when you add white to it, just so you can kind of know what to expect. See that there? It's almost, like I said, it's almost leaning like more teal, except I didn't add any yellow. It's just the, uh, just the black and white. So that's what it looks like with some white in it. So you can see it's still kind of bright, but it's not quite our phthalo blue bright. It's a very, yeah, phthalo blue bright, very specific bright, <laughs> apparently. Okay, so just so you can see, I added some white, but I'm actually going to start with that original mix there. Lots of blue with a little bit of black. That was that first mixture, just to remind everybody. And I'm going to start just by applying that kind of near the bottom here, where it's going to be darkest. So like furthest away from the light, furthest away from if there's like a moon up in the sky, we want all that snow to be a little darker down here. So again, that was just plain blue with a little bit of black. <clears throat> dirty blue. How about the dirty blues? Multiple blues. I like the spelling you did, the B-L-O-O -O as well. Up next, we have Dirty Blue. Actually, I don't know. I think I like your name better. And up next on the stage, we have the Dirty Blues. Yeah, yours is better, Cindy. Okay, so you can see, starting with the dark. And I'm kind of like creeping up the left-hand side as well. I'm creeping up the left, but not really the right, because our cabin is going to be here, and you can see lots of light. I'm going to move my little mouse pointer there. 
So I'm trying to kind of leave a little more room for those maroons, oranges, yellows, but up here we have a little more room to work with and we have just some blue. So I'm gonna work my way up on the left. As I work my way up, I'm gonna slowly add little bits of white to my blue-black mixture so that you can see it gets a little bit lighter. I'm just adding a little more black as I add more blue. I'm just running out of blue. So mixing more and then adding a little white as well. Needs a little more white. I'm being quite, uh, quite minimal with the white here. That's a little better. So just adding a little more white to that blue and then stroking left and right still and kind of bringing it up the canvas, up on the left at least. Just stroking left and right back and forth and trying to blend it into the previous blue by streaking kind of in between the two colors. So you can see I've added my lighter blue and I'm also streaking left and right to help with blending there. And then again, I'm going further up, so I'm adding a little more white. Moving further up here, getting a little lighter. If you ever think it's just looking a little bright for your taste, maybe you like the, like the bl bright blue. My goodness, like the bright blue. Like the, like the bright brew. Uh, if you like the bright... <laughs> If you like the bright blue, you can keep the bright blue. You do not need to be adding black to it. I just like adding the black, as I said, to kind of mute it and kind of, it almost gives it a grayish tone as well. A little more nighttime vibes is all. Ooh, that was a mouthful, apparently. Like the bright blue. So creeping up the left. And then to finish off the blue, I just want to make like the little, um, like horizon line with the little peaks little hills of the snow. So I'm just taking the edge of my brush with this nice kind of light muted blue and waving a little up and down, up and down. Just so we can see the top of the snow and where it, where it lands. So you can see I'm leaving a large empty space here. This is going to be for our other colors like our nice maroon, orange, and yellow. And I am going to continue this all the way over, despite our cabin probably taking up a lot of it anyway. But just in case, we might have different size cabins, different shapes. So just to make sure we have like a completed horizon line, which is like the top of the snow here, I'm just going to bring it all the way across. Again, even though I'm sure this part will be covered here. All right, I'll just leave this there for a minute or two. You can have a look as you catch up and then we'll begin blending our nice maroon colors, oranges, yellows. Good band name. I saw some live music last night. I uh, went to town, went into the city, got invited to a, a cocktail hour. I felt so adult. We're gonna go for cocktails, watch some live music. It was nice. Um, when we were there, <laughs> there were little like tea light candles set up around. It was a very um, like dark environment, very moody, again, very adult some tea light candles around and there were two girls next to my group and they insisted that they have one of the tea light candles. I guess they were trying to take a photo. So they're collecting a bunch of candles. So they could take a very moody photo. <laughs> and within a minute or two, we all, um, we all started to smell something really gross. And we were like, what is that smell? <laughs> and we realized, it was one of the girls had dipped her hair into the candle and ignited. <laughs> she uh, caught her hair on fire <laughs> and I didn't see it, <laughs> but I smelt it. And a few people in my group saw it. I don't want to say like it fully ignited. It's not like I wouldn't be laughing if she was injured, but it was just a tiny little bit. It was enough to like singe her hair and it was enough to smell up the little corner we were in. <laughs> It's fine, no one was harmed, no one was harmed. And it was just funny because moments before they had like taken our tea light, right? And we were like, we're kind of in the dark now. We can't really see a thing. They're collecting all these, all these candles for their aesthetic photo and we we're all giggling. 
So I don't want to say it was karma. I wouldn't wish someone has their hair lit on fire, but it was it was funny. It was a little funny. <laughs> the candles were taken away <laughs> from those girls. <laughs> I'd want to rent a cabin for a week. Oh yeah, that would be so nice, huh? And then get snowed in like this. So for people who didn't catch, I know the cabin's a little tilted. I did that on purpose to hopefully make it look like it's more buried in the snow, in case anyone was wondering. You can see the little, um, the doorway and stuff is kind of covered. That window is right at the snow line here. My idea is hopefully getting snowed in. Love that vibe, love that idea. <clears throat> Frederick was just saying he misses going to see live. Yeah, I haven't seen a lot. I've been to maybe two concerts in the last couple of years. I do have more coming up though, which is exciting. I bought a few tickets recently. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't go out too often. <laughs> That's why I'm making a big deal. Oh, I got invited, wow. Cocktails, ooh. I don't do that too often either. So it was also a pleasant surprise that there was some live music as well. That was fun to see. All right, so we got our blue down. I'm going to start us on our next step here. Uh, our next step is going to be blending some colors. So we're going to start blending our maroon, orange, and then yellow. And I like to work from darkest to lightest just to kind of get the dark ones down first. And then I can use a nice clean brush, get that nice light color down, and then slowly blend it very, very carefully. So let's make our maroon color. <clears throat> I, of course, have a clean brush, so again, if you haven't washed it off, I would wash it off right now. And I keep calling this color maroon. You could think of it as a reddish purple, even. Um, so to make purple, you're mixing red and blue. And of course, to make more of a reddish purple, you just use more red. So you can see how I started with a large pile of red, and I just grabbed a teensy little bit of blue. Just so you can see it starts kind of turning a little more purple. I always mention purple a lot because I feel like it's so, there's such a range of purples, you know? I feel like everyone hears the word purple and kind of thinks of a different purple. And this is more of the reddish purple, a little warmer. Again, leaning a little more like maroon color. That's it on the canvas there. Yeah, Lori, hey. Yes, you can, I recognize that name. Um, what I do is I upload these to YouTube afterwards. Um, it takes me maybe about a week or so to edit it and to upload it, but you can go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Aaron Bun Paints. And uh, yeah, you can see all of my past tutorials there in the meantime, and then this should be up in the next week or so, hopefully. So yeah, absolutely you can. <clears throat> so what I'm doing with this color, I see a couple chats there I'll answer in a second. Uh, I'm just applying it, you can see, kind of around the edge. I started doing it here, doing these left and right back and forth strokes. Kind of applying at the edge of the blue. So kind of laying my color down first, and then I'll blend. So going all along the left-hand side, all along this bottom part, essentially like the whole perimeter of the blue and the blank spot here. Of course, you don't need to worry as much about up here because our cabin will be there, so... If you want to use that as like a practice spot, you can. Otherwise, you can just kind of leave it blank. Just make sure you're bringing the maroon over maybe about halfway to be safe. Again, if you have a smaller cabin or, or anything like that. So applying the maroon, it'll look a little messy at this stage, of course, but then we're going to blend it. I'll give a quick minute as I catch up on chat here. What's the weather like there right now? Um, I haven't really looked outside today. <laughs> Um, my little weather indicator says cloudy. Last night it was kind of, oh, we got some rain last night. Typical for my area, very typical. But yeah, it's kind of a weird, um, like it's winter, but it's not super cold. I'm used to winter being like negative 20 degrees and bundle the heck up before you go outside. But I can get away with like just a little raincoat and be perfectly fine temp wise. So yeah, not too bad. I'm saying yes to more live music this year than I have in the past. Yes, yeah, I've um, I've realized how much, how important it was to me. I used to go all the time pre-COVID. And I think, um, you know, I still have feelings about large gatherings and stuff, but at this point, you know, I wanna get back to um, watching a couple concerts here and there. I can go unmasked if I choose to get boosted. I do need to do that, actually. I need to figure out my, my health uh, health card here now that I'm in a new province. But yeah, I'm feeling comfortable enough that I'm going to start doing that as well. 
So I hope that kind of lifts my mood a little bit because I think that was, again, it's a, it's a very like, that was a very consistent hobby of mine was going to concerts, not even in big groups, just alone, honestly, was a lot of fun for me. So I'm starting to look around at who's touring now, trying to choose some, some artists who I haven't seen before or have seen before. A little mix. All right, so I've applied my maroon. I'll keep calling it maroon, but again, reddish, purple, whatever you want to call it. And the idea now is to blend it into your previous color. So blend it into your blues here. Now, depending on how long ago you lay down your blue, it might be a little dry. Mine is like in the sticky stage here. So if you're in that stage, you might want to grab a little extra of your blue. So I'm grabbing this light blue just to kind of show. Just so you can kind of reapply as you stroke in between the two colors. That'll help you get a smoother blend if you have both of those colors a little more fresh. So I'm grabbing a little bit of the blue, going in between, and just doing quick little strokes. I'm not doing full ones back and forth. I don't want to mix all the color together, just kind of the edge, left and right. Very lightly as well, just kind of like grazing the brush. And you can see how much better that looks versus down here. And it's up to you how much you want to blend it. You can see in my original, like I kind of left a few streaks, some little like points, you know, so it's not perfectly blended. And that's all dependent on what you want. So if you want to keep blending away, you certainly can. I'd recommend washing off your brush here and there. You saw me just do it on the side there. I washed off my brush and used a clean brush to continue blending. And again, very lightly, I'm super loosely just kind of holding the brush like this. The edges of the bristles are kind of grazing as I go. Just so you're not like really forcing the paint, you're just kind of letting the top layer kind of mix around a little bit. And you can see how that looks nice and soft now. And you can always re-add color if you need to. I guess you can see with this one area, maybe my maroon got a little eaten up, disappeared a little. So you can always add a little more. There's no harm in that. I'm just gonna grab a little more of my maroon after I mix them. Apply some bigger blobs here. And then same thing, I can do a little light swiping just to blend a little more. There we go, that's a little better, I think. That maroon color is going, coming out a little nicer there. All right, so take your time with it. It can be a little frustrating as colors start to dry. That is the one thing about acrylics. It can work against you sometimes, the whole drying, drying quickly thing. I've learned to love it. I, I personally like it because it means, you know, you can let something dry that you don't like or you want to fix, and then you can just go right on top of it. You don't need to worry about working with it, moving it around. You just say, I'm covering it up. So if you ever get into that mood where you're just not, not enjoying it really, just let something dry and try again. So here I go again. I'm just adding a little more of that blue. I'm trying to, oops, match my blue. That's a little light. If it's a little off, that's okay. You can see applying it on the edge there as I blend, as I go left and right and pick up that maroon that is still a little wet there. Again, all this is doing is activating both colors so that they can blend properly. Uh, Neo, hey, welcome in. Neo Moon Art, what kind of art do you do? We're doing a little acrylic painting today, but I'm curious what you get up to too, so welcome in. Uh, Shay, I went to my first show alone last November. It was super nice. I want to do it again. It's honestly the best. <laughs> no shade to anyone I've been to concert with. It's just nice to like not worry. I'm always worried about like, does this person want to stand here? Like, what would they prefer? Maybe I want to dance a little and let loose and maybe I'm not too comfy doing that with others. I don't know. It's just uh, it's just less to think about. So it's a very selfish thing because it's like I go on my own time, like I don't need to coordinate with anybody. It's just easier. It is a fun experience though, sharing it with friends as well, going to a concert or live music. Absolutely. And the movies too, same idea. I got into going to the movies alone again pre-pandemic a little bit more. Again, it's really fun to share those experiences with people, but sometimes I'm like, I just, I just don't want to worry about like, again, coordinating. It's just the coordination. All right, still sweeping left and right. And you can see it's getting a little like, I don't want to say uneven, 
but it's kind of going in and out of it, right? It's not like a full box like the the space used to be. And that's great. We don't want it to be like a big box of color, at least in my opinion. Light kind of bounces off things and is hiding behind little hills in the snow. So it's kind of nice that it goes in and out a bit. Yeah. So if you see that happening, I wouldn't worry about it. I would kind of embrace that. I think that adds to have all these colors just kind of flowing nicely wherever they want to go. Just gonna add a little more. It looks like it got eaten up a little there. And then I just need to blend the bottom a little bit more and then I'll move on to our next color here. And again, take your time. I'm trying my best. I always try my best to go at a speed that I think is good for those who are a little more beginner. But of course you might need a little more time to blend or to figure out some colors. So just go at your own pace. A lot of painting is just enjoying the process and that can mean very different things for, very, for different people. Different speeds, different colors, different techniques. Just checking my reference there. That's yeah, looking good. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, you went alone. Fantastic choice. Sobbed and laughed as openly as I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, our um our Bun Discord movie night was good for that movie because we were all kind of watching it together, but separate enough that I could sob uncontrollably. Correct. Correct. <laughs> It's true, it's true. But it's so special to share with others too, so it's tough, it's tough. And that goes with anything as well. All right, as we continue to add colors, just as a heads up, I'm not going to the next color quite yet. Just want to give another minute or two. Uh, we just want to keep in mind roughly where we want the cabin to be, because what we don't want to happen is add all our beautiful colors and then the cabin covers it all up. So try your best to just kind of lightly visualize like where you want the bottom of the cabin to land. And then we're working our colors up into that bottom point. If we keep going further, it means those colors are going to be covered, which is okay. Again, it's okay to cover things. It's more so just don't want all your hard work covered, you know, all those nice, beautiful, bright colors. Um, if you're curious about where my cabin lands, I would say it's just below halfway. If you look at the bottom edge of the cabin, right here i would say it's just below halfway so if you want to aim to kind of get your maroon orange and yellow to about halfway or a little less i think that's a good good goal for you so right around there okay on that note i will kind of move forward here we'll start to do our orange into the maroon and then we'll get a nice light yellow in there so I've washed off my brush. I'm still using that same large flat brush and I'm going to now mix together yellow with red. And that's going to create our nice bright orange. I'd say I'm using maybe a little more yellow than red because I like a lighter orange. If you want it a little darker, a little more like fiery, you can add more red. If you want it even lighter than what I have, you can do a little more yellow. Something like that. So same idea. I'm just going to start by putting that around, I'll call it the perimeter or the edge of the maroon and the blank space, and then we can start to blend it. So I just kind of, you can see again, slop it on a little messier here. Not smoothing it out quite yet. And same thing, I'm not worried about up here. If you want to practice up there, feel free, but I'm just making sure it's going about halfway in here. Even if you want, like, here, check this out. You can even, like, sketch out the cabin. If that helps you visualize, you can just take your orange and do that because that'll be covered up anyway just if you want to see where the cabin is probably going to land mine even might even go a little further out but yeah just roughly if you want to visualize it feel free otherwise i've got my orange down once i have my orange down i like washing off my brush and then if my maroon is a little dry, which it is, I'm going to load my brush up with a little more maroon. 
and then go in and blend. I guess the alternative, I'm not really saying the alternative, but the alternative is if your maroon is still uh, wet and fresh, you can just use a clean brush for this step, just brushing in between those two colors. You can just wash off your brush and then wipe in between the two colors. The reason I keep dipping into the previous color is because it's dry on my canvas. If it were wet on my canvas, I'd be able to take my brush and move it around, right? If I worked a little quicker, I'd be able to do that, but we don't want to work too quick. I want to make sure we're all going at a good pace together. So again, sweeping in between maroon and orange. If it helps you, feel free to use a smaller brush as well. I keep using the big one here. I kind of, you can see, use the thin edge of the brush. I'm kind of, that allows me to work in a smaller area rather than using the whole width of the brush. You can flip it and use the thin edge. But yeah, if you'd rather use a smaller brush for this step, you can absolutely do that too. Just slowly adding a little more color as we go. Whatever I think is kind of missing or I just want more of, you can add a little to your brush and keep sweeping. And again, looks a little messy on the inside, but getting it, getting it nice and blended where those two edges are meeting here. And like I said earlier, if you're ever at a point where you're just a little frustrated with it, maybe there's almost like too much paint on the canvas as well, that can sometimes be an issue as well. Just too much and you feel like it's just getting blobby, not working, just let it dry. You can just, uh, start working on a different section, maybe apply a different color, and they can always go back and, uh, and try again. You know, maybe the second time around it's a little easier. We gotta be patient with ourselves on that kind of stuff. I'm just re-adding a little blue. Add whatever you think. All right, I'm gonna keep that there. You keep that there for a minute or two. How do you make maroon again? It was lots of red and a tiny bit of blue. So it's like a, a reddish purple, kind of. Yeah, I'll keep this here for a minute or two, and then we can add our lovely, lovely yellow for that really nice bright glow. Yeah, this kind of like gray blue to maroon to orange yellow I saw in a few paintings online. When I'm designing these original paintings, I usually pull inspiration from a few different spots, either a few different paintings or photos or whatnot. And that includes just color palettes. So I saw a few paintings using this nice color palette, and that's what kind of started me off on, uh, on this painting, just wanting something that had, again, those specific tones as well. It wasn't just blue, purple, yellow. It was the kind of gray blue to maroon to the, yeah, to the light yellow. Yeah, you can find inspiration anywhere, even if it's just a pretty color. All right, so we'll be coming up to the last step of the snow itself, which will be that yellow. And then we can go ahead and work on our background a bit more. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just as something for me to do while I'm waiting, I'm just adding a little more light blue right on the top here. I feel like this blue up here got a little dark, so I'm just gonna blend in some lighter blue right near the top. I always do my best to make it as similar as possible to the original. There's always obviously some differences, but if you ever see me kind of going backwards in steps, reapplying things, that's just me trying to Kind of fix things up to make it look more like the original. But of course, again, if yours is looking a little different, a little more your style, that's the whole point as well. 
you having fun with it, changing it how you want as well. That's better, see a little more accurate to the original there. All right, let's add our beautiful yellow. I think the yellow is really what kind of brings out the glow. That's why I keep praising it as the beautiful yellow. So I've just washed off my brush and I'm actually gonna mix two colors. For those who have watched my tutorials before, I'm sure you know why, but I'll explain again here. I'm mixing yellow and white. And I'm doing this because I find my yellow paint, as much as I love my cheap acrylic paints, the yellow specifically seems to be very transparent. So mixing white in it, I find helps brighten it up. It helps with the transparency a lot, just makes it, you can see, apply nice and thick on top rather than kind of like transparent, almost watery looking. So if you ever have that issue, I would suggest adding some white to your color just to see. I know of course it'll lighten the color a little bit, but I think that's worth it if it means the transparency gets fixed. All right, same as usual. You can see I'm just applying that here all around the perimeter of the orange and the gap. Again, not worried about up here. It looks very messy right now and that's okay. We're gonna keep that there. And then once the yellow is applied, you can wash or just wipe off your brush. Either one works and lightly, lightly brush back and forth left and right. You can see these outlines here. I'm not worried about those because that's where my cabin will be going anyway. So it might look kind of yucky right now, but just trust it. Just trust that you'll, you'll fix that up later. You'll cover it up later. For now, you can concentrate on the actual blending here, going back and forth into your orange from the yellow to the orange. And again, if your orange is a little dry, you know, you know if it's dry, if you get these very dry streaks, see those, they're just kind of laying on top, not the best. If it's a little dry, just grab a little extra orange on your brush. Sweep them away. Mix them in a bit. Again, if you need to go back to your maroons or your blues, you can always do that as well. up a little more orange and I'm just lightly wisping on those edges. That got rid of them a little bit better. I think I'm going back to my room to keep adding that in as well, just a little bit more. Yeah, and if you're finding the same thing that you feel like your colors just constantly keep getting eaten up, that's okay. That's kind of part of the process. It's part of the learning. You can see that's what's happening on mine too. I've done this hundreds of times and it still happens to me. It's kind of hard to plan out like how the paint will, I guess, blend together, how much they'll overlap, you know, you can, get better at it for sure, but there's always going to be times where you need to reapply and re-blend. So don't panic, just keep going. Got my maroon back in. And I'm just going to grab a little blue to kind of sweep that on top. That's a little better there. Okay, so I'll keep that here as usual for a minute or two. And where are we going next? Oh, we're gonna go to the trees in the background next. So we'll be going back to using these blues that we kind of started with. We're gonna start with our nice dark blue, kind of lay down some of those, and then we'll put some nice blue highlights you can kind of see in the background there. 
makes the trees look a little more textured, adding different shades of that, of that kind of gray blue that we started with. It's almost looking a little more fiery than my original. Again, I'm trying to compare and keep it pretty similar. I think that's maybe just a more fiery orange in there. Very bright. It's nice though. Again, very warm. That was my whole goal is to make this a nice warm painting. So if that's the vibe, that's fine with me. But again, if I didn't like it, I could either apply paint on it right now and kind of mix it in or just let it dry and then put something completely different down. Both work. Yeah, that is true too, Cindy. I love going to the movies by myself because I don't have to share my $40 popcorn and Coke. Ain't that the truth though, $40 popcorn and Coke. <laughs> so many true facts in that statement there. <laughs> Whatever, I never share even if I'm going with people, so it's the same either way for me. <laughs> Although I get the kitty pack, I don't usually do the, the the nice big one, but it always comes out to some outrageous amount anyway. Movies are expensive, but they're so nice and fun. I need a good movie to go see. If anyone has current movie recommendations currently playing in theaters, I'd love to know. I just haven't been in a while. I keep looking and nothing's really pulling me. I'm just going to reload my palette with some blue because we need some blue next. There we go. Last Dance! Is that a new movie or old movie? Oh, the last of the Magic Mike series. Ah! Oh, yes, yeah, so I bet all the Valentine's movies are coming out, huh? Alone at a Valentine's movie. Ah, what a life. <laughs> Interesting. I thought, or I guess it's Save the Last Dance, and it's not Channing Tatum either, is it? Julia Stiles. Oh, I don't know why I'm picking up red. Okay, I was uh, just about to start mixing our next color. I don't know why I dipped into red. It was not what we want. Um, so again, next we're going to be doing the uh, the trees that I kind of zoomed in there in the background. So what I did with the trees is I started with a darker uh, kind of like gray blue color. So similar to the snow color here, we're just starting at the bottom for the nice deep dark version. And then we're going to layer on top some nice light kind of gray blue. Um, so you get all the nice little highlights and you can kind of see more like snow blobs almost on top. That was my idea to kind of replicate nice big piles and blobs of snow. So you can see I've switched brushes. First of all, I'll point out that I'm using the medium round brush now. It's just a little nicer for those small little blobs and brush strokes there. And I'm going to go back to my plate and mix together that nice dark blue. So that was blue with a little bit of black in there. Blue and a little black to get that what I call like a gray blue or muted blue. I've been calling it a few different things. But yeah, darkens it up, kind of tones it down, or what did I say? It mutes it, mutes the blue. Okay, so our trees are going to start out very dark. You should be able to see them against the other color. Let's see. Yep, you can see, I see it right on top there. So I'll start with those trees, and then we'll pile on different colors. So what I do for trees, I like to start with... Um, I'm going to do these a little differently, actually. Usually I teach the... More, uh, more common Bob Ross trees where I kind of tap my brush all the way down. For these, I like to just do individual brush strokes because again, the snow, I like to kind of um, replicate the piles of snow. So I'm taking the kind of tip of the brush, I may be holding it like 45 degree angle at the canvas. So rather than straight on or straight like that, I'm going 45, uh, applying just with a little bit of pressure and stroking down. I'm starting at the top of the tree and then what I do is I start to stroke a little kind of out to the left, out to the right. And start to create a nice tree shape, which is kind of like a triangle. 
So starting at a very little tip top here and then slowly working my way out with those more like diagonal strokes or even like curved strokes. You can see how I kind of curve them out like this. They get slowly and slowly a little further away until you have a nice tree shape. And then you can fill it up with more small little brush strokes. So I just kind of stroke, 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 coming either down or kind of to the sides a little bit. Down or diagonally, let's say. And you see how that fills up into a nice little tree. And I don't mind a couple little gaps in there. If you want to really fill it up, you can either tap or just use your brush and fill it in. But I personally like to see small little gaps here and there. And we'll be adding our highlights on top later, which I'm sure will cover up some gaps as well. Watch the trailer when you can. Maybe I will. Yeah, I'll check what's playing in my local theaters and then figure it out. Should get one of those poppers and all the toppings to make it at home. Yeah. Special experience. That's it. Yeah, that's it. There's something about, you know, I've bought movie theater popcorn before that you make at home and it's just not the same. And it's just the experience of going out, I think, you know, you can't, I, I can't, I can't seem to replicate it at home. It's very like me time as well, you know, nobody bother me. I'm in the movie theater. I'm too distracted when I'm here. I can be looking at different things on my screens or whatever. My phone can't disconnect. But if you're in the theater, you're, you can't be on your phone. If you do that, no, 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 no. That is a sin. Put the phone away. All right, I'll do another tree. I'm going to do a bunch of trees, of course, but I'll, I'll walk you through another one here just so you can see. Maybe I'll go over here. You can see a bit better. So loading up my brush with that blue gray. So that was blue and black mixed together. Start at the top with one little stroke going straight up and down. Two more strokes, diagonal, diagonal. And then as I get further down, I'm moving them further out. So getting wider and wider. Until I reach the bottom. And you can see, I kind of like to do the whole edge first, just so I can see the outline. And that way, if I need to adjust, I can. Like this guy's leaning a little bit. Maybe if I want to adjust him, I just bring out this left hand side a bit more, make him a bit more straight up and down. You know, I kind of like to fix up the edge first and then I'll really fill it in with all my little strokes. Yeah, and of course, movie theater, you really can't beat the big screen for some movies anyway. Not all movies need the big screen, but for sure some. All right, so I'm just going to keep adding trees. They're all the same idea, of course. The only differences you might see are a few different sizes. So adjust as you like. Do a couple smaller ones, a couple taller ones. They don't have to end, you know, before the top of the canvas. You can make them go all the way up. You can see in my original, there's a couple like that. So if you happen to grow your tree taller than the canvas, that's totally fine. Makes it look a little more natural, if anything all the different heights. You can see I'm keeping them all kind of close together. They're not the tightest, but they're not the loosest either. I'm trying to kind of cover up at least the bottom parts here. So they're all combining a little bit near the bottom. Oops, went the wrong way there. Looks like I, if I'm trying to stick to my original, looks like I have a nice big tree up here. So in that case, you can skip the, the tip. You can just start with your little diagonal strokes. Coming all the way down here. And then filling her in.
You can see I'm being pretty loose. Like, obviously, I'm trying to get some tree shapes, but looseness because I'm also going to go on top of this with another shade of blue, right? So if I feel like anything's a little messy or just needs a little more cleaning up, I can always do that with the next color because it'll be covering up a lot of these, uh, this dark blue anyway. Let's make a smaller one here. Just switch it up. And yeah, even though my cabin might overlap, you can see some tips of the trees are still popping up. So just to be safe, I'm still adding the full trees here. And that way I'm not worried when I add the cabin. You don't want to, you know, lock yourself into a position where you feel like you need to change something in order to um, like cover up something else or cover up a gap or anything. That's always frustrating if there's a gap left over. So again, that's why I started by saying if you need to go further down or or you're, I guess you're not sure how far down you need to go, just go the extra little bit. You know, paint paint a little more of that tree, whatever it is you're doing. Just go for it. It can always dry. You can always go on top of it. That's pretty good. Nice full, full little woodsy area there. Oops. Okay, so once again, I'll just give a minute or two for anyone who's painting along to catch up if they need to, and then we'll. Uh, yeah, we could probably go right on top with some light blue. I debated it there because, of course, we just laid down this dark blue. I wouldn't want it too wet for you to go on top of, um, but it should be okay. Especially these starting trees. They're, trees, they're already at the sticky stage where they're like kind of wet, kind of dry. So we can just kind of pile on some lighter blues right on top. <clears throat> yeah, movies. What else was there? I feel like I keep seeing trailers for some and then I find out they're coming out like in six months or whatever. <laughs> Everyone's starting to advertise their movies for way far out. Is Avatar still in theaters? I wonder if I should do the three and a half hours for that movie. I wasn't interested in Avatar and then I heard a couple people say that it was actually decent. <laughs> decent. Because it was getting a bad rap I feel like right at the start. But, uh, but yeah, some people were saying it was all right. Cindy, I think you like Avatar, right? The first one anyway. I think you've mentioned that before. Yeah, it's just too long. I don't know. Three and a half hours in a movie theater is a lot for me. I'd get antsy. I'm just on my plate here mixing more of that um, gray-blue mixture, the black-blue, I guess. Prepping for the next step. Oh, hey, Luke. Thanks for the lurk. Yeah, love it. Second one is still in theaters. Oh, okay. Oh, so you're waiting. Okay. You wouldn't want to do the $40 popcorn and pop for that one, huh? Because I, I think visually, I think um, a lot of people are raving about it because visually it's really cool. <clears throat> uh, do you miss it back from where you moved from? Do I miss uh, where I used to live? I mean, there's parts I miss for sure. Ontario, I'll always consider my home because I grew up there and pretty much all my family is there minus a few of them um and then and a lot of my friends are still there of course as much as i try and convince them to come out here a lot of them are quite settled in ontario understandably so i miss those parts but honestly like environment wise what uh what the two cities have to offer the two provinces have to offer i'm definitely liking it here it's uh definitely for me here so part parts of it charlene yeah not not all, but parts for sure. Okay, so let's do some nice highlights on top of those trees. So what I was doing on my plate was just mixing more of that color we were just using. So that was the blue and black mixture. 
And now, of course, what I want to do, same as when we applied it with the snow here, I uh, added some white to lighten it up. Maybe a lot of white, it's a very dark color. Let's try that again. There we go. So not like the lightest blue, but somewhere in between, maybe like a medium here. So just compared, you can see there's a lighter blue here, more of a medium right here. And I like to start with this because I do like to lighten the blue a little bit more. Um, if you really look at my trees in the original here, you'll notice that I made some trees a little darker and then a little lighter and then a little darker again. And that was just to um, properly ref reflect the light coming off of the window here or just the cabin in general. Maybe there's another window on the other side here. Um, but yeah, light source, it's gonna hit these trees the most and then these ones will be a little bit further in the dark, all right? So I'm gonna use that, I'm gonna call this like my medium blue and I'll start to apply it to kind of the edge trees and then we'll work our way more into the middle or kind of left middle area. So I'm just doing the same thing. There's really nothing different here. I'm still doing my little strokes. The only difference is that I'm adding less strokes. So I'm not trying to fill up the tree as much. I want lots of little gaps here because I have the dark, dark blue in the background or I guess more of a base on the trees. So I don't really need to fill up the whole thing because we have the dark blue base. These are just supposed to showcase like little highlights on the tree, right? Little pieces of snow, little lumps of snow that are catching a little bit of light, right? And then you get all these nice little gaps in there. Maybe I'll do the left hand half of this one and I'll leave the right hand half for a nice light blue. You can do that. It doesn't need to be the same color all the way. Elwinder, hey! Welcome in. We're just in the middle of a nice little painting toot on a Sunday. I guess the video doesn't showcase the amount of time I've been streaming, but I was streaming quite a lot today. We were playing The Last of Us earlier, and now we've uh, swapped a painting, so welcome in. Oh, Vonda, that's so good to hear. I know you said you were starting your little trip home, so that's, that's very good to hear. Glad you're home safe after everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, Cindy says, yeah, but three hours. Oh, that's what's getting you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless they have recliners, that would be hard for me. And just like <laughs> bathroom breaks. Like, I don't know. I guess I, I have a pretty good bladder, as we all know. <laughs> I'm not usually doing bathroom breaks, but I think I would just get antsy as well. Yeah, all of it. Sitting down for that amount of time and just like not moving, being like steadily watching a screen can be a lot for sure. I don't know if you saw, but James Cameron was asked about that. Someone, I guess an interviewer, right when it came out. Everyone's talking about the three to three and a half hour time frame. What would you suggest for bathroom breaks? And gosh, James Cameron is uh, he's quite the confident dude because he said something like, they can go, or they said, when, when would you do a bathroom break? What scene would you suggest having your bathroom break during? And he said, they can go whenever they want because they'll just see the scenes when they come see Avatar a second time in theaters. Oh. I thought that was quite the statement, assuming everybody would be seeing it more than once in theaters. I was like, alrighty. Not to rag on the movie itself, just the, again, the time frame. It's a lot of time to spend going to the theater, watching a movie twice <laughs> while it's still out in theaters. Does anyone know how much money it's made? Like in terms of the rankings, I know everyone's looking at the rankings for uh, highest grossing, I guess. At least I'm interested in that. I wonder if it's cracked like top three, because I think it's been doing pretty well, actually. <clears throat> yeah, Elwinder, exactly. It's like, <laughs> well, James, like if we even get there, <laughs> I won't be seeing it at first. Like, I'm sure I'll check it out eventually, but yeah, I'm not rushing to the theater. Right before you got in here, I was just asking, what is in theaters right now? Nothing's intrigued me. Uh, Amy, thank you for following. You have art in your, t in your name, Amy Wise Art. What kind of art do you do? If you want to tell us a bit about what you do, I'm curious. I'm painting with acrylics right now. I'm doing a painting tutorial as I do maybe like once a month or so. 
I hated the first one. Why would I go see the sequel? I didn't hate the first one. I kind of joke about it a little bit, though. I brag on it a wee bit. And it's because of the time, like, I really think if it wasn't so long, because the first one was really long, too, I wouldn't have ragged on it so much. It just felt... To me, I felt really like, ah, oh, it's really just dragging out of it. Yeah, it just wasn't really for me. But I'm always willing to give a movie a second, not a second chance, but like a sequel a second chance if it's getting good reviews. Or if somebody explains it to me differently, a different way to look at one. I'd watch again. <clears throat> but then again, you know, Titanic could do be a long movie and I watch that religiously. <laughs> at least once a year. <laughs> All right, I'm on my palette again. I'm just adding a little more white. You can see I'm just lightening up my blue because I left those few trees, as I pointed out here, blank. And I want to add a little more of a light blue to those. You can see, oh yeah, a nice big difference. Ooh, that's real bright. I kind of like it though. So again, just to kind of showcase the light coming from the cabin, we want to highlight these trees a little bit more. Hey, Amy. Yeah, good to see you in chat. Hi there, Trisha Lord. Mostly portraits. Good for you. I could never. You artists that do portraits are like gods to me. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> just like body proportions and stuff. I'm just like, blah, 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 blah. can't do it. I can. I just <laughs> not as into it. <laughs> um, I usually do like landscape stuff, as you can see here. Seventh highest grossing, 516 million domestically. Whoa. Yeah, internationally, they end up killing it. I wonder what countries and markets love Avatar, but yeah, it always shocks me seeing international versus domestic. Dang, dude. Dang. Talk about Avatar 2. Avatar 2, Gray. Just doing these same steps, by the way, for anyone wondering, it's the just a different color. I'm just still using the tip of my brush, doing my little, you can see diagonals on the sides, maybe some straight up and downs in the middle, just being a little more loose. Loose and sparse, both of those words. Uh, Amy, been lurking for a bit. Oh, cool, okay, nice. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Yeah, we're not, we're not usually chaotic. We were a little bit, uh, a little less chill earlier. We were doing a, a playthrough of The Last of Us. On Sundays, I'm gonna start doing that in the mornings. So a little more stressful, <laughs> a little less chill, but still fun. But I'm glad you enjoy the vibes now. When I'm painting, it is a little more this way. Occasional chaotic energy, occasional. Yeah, way of the water, that's right. Yeah, we have all the things we're good at and just like things we enjoy too. Like I don't want to bring myself down too much. I'm sure I could, you know, do some of that if I put my mind to it and practiced a lot, but I just have never really enjoyed it as much. And animals always kind of freak me out. I've talked about that very openly during my streams. I do my best. The animals, same idea. It's just the proportions and stuff. I kind of get wrapped up around. I want to make it so accurate, but keep it loose, and I can't really find a nice in-between for myself anyway. So yeah, just about preferences too. Cute, look at those trees, especially this half tree. Remember I did like half of it the first color? Looks great, because then now you can really see like it looks almost round, because you get the highlight on one side and then the dark on the other, right? These ones look, I don't want to say two-dimensional, but a little more flat. So if you really wanted to up your game with these trees, you could apply those to each of these. You don't need to get this exact highlight color and exact shadow color, but just adding like a little more of a highlight on one side or even just like the very middle would really elevate these. Like even if we just like touched a couple on that guy, kind of again highlights and maybe makes it a little more three dimensional, a little more rounded out. Cute. Keep this here for a minute or two, and then we're going to move on to... What are we going to do next? I guess the cabin, huh? We can get the brown down of the cabin, and then that way we can let it dry as we do the nice big tree, and then we'll move back over. Yeah, just a sprinkle of chaos. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
sprinkle of chaos painting. Or emote making, that's when we get a little more chaotic as well. I sometimes do digital art streams where I just work on Procreate and do a couple fun emotes. That's pretty much all I do on Procreate is emotes. <laughs> Those end up turning a little more chaotic, a little more fun. Because it's me kind of messing around on Procreate and kind of learning at the same time. I'm not the best at it. I know the basic functions, but I'm always learning. So yeah, those get a little more messy. Messy and fun. Let me zoom you in a bit on the, on the cabin here. Boop. To adjust this properly here. There we go, just so you can see the cabin a bit better. Do, 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 do. All right, so just as you're finishing up trees, or if you're finishing up trees, I'll just kind of talk about the cabin a bit and then we can start painting it together. So I just zoomed in so you can really see it. Um, but yeah, pretty basic. Nothing too crazy. Uh, what I chose to do is um, kind of get the front face of the cabin, of course, facing us. So we have our nice window, our nice door. And then to make it more three dimensional, you can see I just kind of pulled the rooftop over to the right. So we don't even end up seeing the right hand side of the cabin, but that would go around here. It's just kind of falling off the canvas. So just to make it even easier, we don't even need to worry about it. We just pull the roof to make it look more three dimensional. And then, of course, the other side is going to be hidden because we're seeing this side. We would see the right hand side. The left hand side is going to be kind of pointing towards the trees and we won't see it. So really, we're, we're mainly focusing on just like I keep saying, the face of the cabin. And then we can just extend that rooftop to give it the three dimensional look. So we can start with a very basic kind of like house shape, you know, the very basic shape you would draw or doodle maybe in school. Nice kind of rectangle at the bottom and then a nice triangle on top. I'm going to use brown to do, excuse me, to do that um, just so we can kind of put our nice brown base down. And then, as I said earlier, we can add in our other um, our other elements like our snow, our window, etc. Once the brown has dried, we'll give it lots of time to have a nice little drying session there. Just going to zoom out again so you can see this in contrast or in context with the rest of the painting. There we go. So I guess first I need to teach you all how to make brown. That's going to be three different colors. We're going to use black, we're going to use red, and we're going to use yellow. Mix them all together. I usually find myself adding a little extra red. I talk about brown a lot, mixing brown anyway. I find the most common thing that happens is we end up mixing a brown that looks kind of like green. It looks kind of gross, kind of pukey colored. And I find adding red helps with that pukiness. It kind of warms up the brown a bit more, counteracts the yellow, which kind of creates that green tinge. So if you're mixing your red, yellow, and black, and you feel like it's just looking kind of, again, pukey, add some red. And the other alternative is adding a little more black, and that'll, of course, darken the brown a bit more as well and kind of get rid of the pukiness. And you can always test on your canvas, too. Sometimes looking at your palette can play a little trickery, I guess, when you're looking at all these different colors and you're mixing your brown. You're like, it doesn't look quite right. Try putting it on your canvas just to see. It'll give you a better representation of what your brown's looking like. All right, so you can see I'm very messily putting it on here. But what I mainly want to do is actually use it to sketch my cabin. If you're a little nervous about this step, I'll let you know what you can do is start by doing a smaller cabin. You know, do a smaller rectangle and a smaller triangle, like a little mini guy. You know, that's your little practice. And then all you got to do is expand it a bit. You can just kind of make a bigger shape around it. Make it a little bigger, adjust as you need to, you know, have a look at the shape. Do you want to move it? Do you want to angle it? You know, what do you want to change about it? And you can just kind of keep extending whatever edges you need to. 
And you can see I'm doing the whole sketch idea, but if you'd like to fill in as you do this, just to see the whole shape, see how it's looking once it's all filled in with brown, you can of course do that. But I'm gonna keep doing my little, little sketchiness here. So I'm just using the tip of my brush. I'm using that same medium round brush in case I didn't uh, clarify that. Uh, Dolo, hey, thanks for the follow. Welcome into the stream. We're doing a little painting tutorial here. Okay, so I decide I want it a little taller. I'm gonna raise it up a little bit. Bring my little rooftop peak up here. I like it kind of hitting the trees. And then bringing it back down. And again, it kind of falls off the canvas. So if you feel like you're not quite hitting the other edge, that's okay. Like if this rooftop is not lining up here, that's all right. Yeah, hey Dalo, welcome to the chat. If you have any questions about what I'm doing, feel free to ask or about painting or whatnot in general, if you're curious about learning. That's what I like to do. I like to encourage others to paint and try out art and uh, yeah, lead them through some tutorials just to help aid with that a little bit. Okay, got my roof. I'm just gonna do this bottom edge here a bit more cleanly. And again, I personally like angling it. I wanna angle it kind of downwards. I thought that made it look a little more like it was sinking into the snow or that the snow was at least covering the bottom of the cabin. So I'm purposely angling it. If you'd rather straighten it out a little more A-type, that's okay. <laughs> you do what you, with uh, what you want with your painting. Another tongue twister. You do what you want with your painting. Yes, there it is. All right, and you can see, of course, I'm just filling it in. Again, you, you're welcome to fill it in as you were sketching. Or you can wait till you're done sketching and you can start filling it in. I'm just messily putting on some brown. There's no real technique here, of course. Just making sure it's nicely covered. I guess smoothing it out in the process. That is one thing I'm doing. You can see I'm kind of brushing back and forth to kind of smooth things out a bit. That's more so just for drying time just to increase uh, or decrease rather the drying time to make it dry faster. I'm just kind of flattening the paint out, making sure it's all nice and smooth. If there's big bumps and lumps, those will just take a little longer to dry. Oh, too much black. So again, if you do something like that, don't worry, just <laughs> mix another color. I'm just mixing like more red and yellow into my brown to lighten it up. Then I can kind of apply it on top and mix it around and make it disappear a little more. It kind of darkened up my brown. That was all right, actually. Um, a medium. Well, the I guess the medium I'm using is acrylic. If you mean like mediums mixed into the acrylic, then no. I honestly thought up until semi recently that mediums were more so just for oil paints, but um, I forget who. People have been telling me about mediums for acrylics, though, to make it dry slower and stuff. And I was like, wow, what a... Revolutionary thing, us acrylic painters get some mediums too. But yeah, I've never been, uh, never really wanted them, I guess. I've just been, I've gotten so used to the quick drying of the acrylic paint and the consistency and flow that uh, I've never really wanted to change it personally. So yeah, just straight acrylic paint. Academic acrylic as well, so very, um, very like student grade, nothing too fancy, nothing expensive. I try and use materials for my tutorials that everyone could uh, pick up quite easily if they wanted to. <laughs> you like him, Vonda? I think he's pretty cute. I use it when I have a lot of blending to do. There you go, yeah. So like we were doing all this blending in here, I'm sure an acrylic medium like that would have been uh, helpful for those maybe who want to take their time a little bit more. You can see I got a little messy here, a little sticky as well. So yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, Amy's confirming. Oh no, there are many acrylic mediums, lots of fun textured ones. Yeah, I think that would be more what I'd be into. I have um, followed an artist for a while who mixes some sort of medium into her acrylic and makes it super thick. Like acrylic is already semi thick, but you can see mine is student grade, a little more runny, a little thinner, but still, still kind of there. But just like, so she can use it like, um, it's like cake icing, essentially. She can just like blob it on and it stays put. It does not move. It dries just like that. Super thick and beautiful looking. So actually, yeah, uh, Amy, you say textured mediums. I think that would be the one thing I would try. Yeah, yeah. Hey, animal, good to see you. The advantage, um, and simultaneously the disadvantages. I know, <laughs> I know. 
I mainly think the drying thing is an advantage just because I've again worked with it so much I kind of like that at this point um, but I know for some it can be a major disadvantage and uh, yeah when I talk to oil painters specifically that's what they say too they're like that's why I like oils I can play with it longer I'm like that's why I don't like oils I want to go on top of it I just want to do my next thing you know I like the layering Okay, one more quick minute if you're working on the brown of the cabin. I'm just going to smooth mine out a bit more. I see a couple ridges. Again, that's just for drying time. Nothing wrong with a little texture in your paint. Just to make sure this is dry in time for uh, our little details on top. So coming up next, we're doing that nice big tree that you see on the left here. Added that in just to kind of offset the cabin. I knew I wanted some sort of a cabin painting. It felt a little too open like this. If you like it open though, again, feel free to leave it. Feel free to add something else if you want here. But I thought a tree kind of made a nice offset from the big dark cabin, you know, get a nice dark tree in there as well. Yeah, I'm animal, I feel you. Cool, this layer is dry already, so I can do more stuff. And blah, 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 <laughs> this didn't dry so fast. I can blend it. Yep, yep. You're right, it always is the blending. That's the one time where I'm like, I could have used a little extra time. But even that, I just feel like I like, I know the timing and I just try and do it fast. <laughs> it's not the most enjoyable sometimes feeling rushed like that, but it's almost a fun challenge at points. <laughs> Speed painting, you know? But yeah, I've, I've totally thought those two same thoughts many a time, many a time. And I think more often the, the cool, this layer is dry already, I can do more. So that's why I stick with it. Hey Aaron, is it good to use a blow dryer to dry? You could if you want. Um, I've timed it out, I think, with enough time that uh, this should be nice and dry. Again, it's more so just depending on how much paint you've been using. If you've really caked it on, a little blow dry wouldn't hurt on the cabin, but we're about to spend at least like 10, 15 minutes on uh, the tree. So it should be more than enough time for that to dry there. Dolo says I really need to find more time to paint. I know that's what we all say. I highly recommend you do find the time. I know it's easier said than done, but uh, yeah, it's just like anything, right? It's just like any hobby that you want to invest more time in or anything that you do to like, you know, give yourself a little self care or just uh, just relax a bit, you know, replace watching a TV show with painting. Nothing wrong with TV shows, just like, you know, replace a little something you already make time for. Give painting a try, see how it works. Yeah, truly, it's, um, I don't know, it's obviously something you gotta learn and put some energy into, but it can be so relaxing as well, and that's why I suggest, like, thinking of your off time, you know? Time you want to spend just kind of, like, chilling a little bit, as long as you can kind of get into that state when painting and lose yourself a little bit and just enjoy the process of mixing some colors, applying it on a canvas, um, then yeah, I, I think it can be really healthy to do for sure. And I think it's a good accomplishing feeling too, you know, even if you don't complete a painting, it's cool to see progress, you know? After an hour being like, oh wow, I did a couple blending, you know, blending areas, added some cool colors. Very cool to see it all come together. Uses a somewhat airtight container with water inside, so at least the palette doesn't... Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard about the Stay Wet palettes or... Um, yeah, homemade versions. I'm, I'm still on my uh, very not stay wet volcano plate palette, which is just a paper plate with layers of acrylic paint forming into a volcano. One day I'll switch, or maybe I never will. It's too fun making a volcano. <laughs> I can't stop. All right, I'm going to move us slowly into the next element, so that nice big tree. So similar to what we've been doing with our other trees, I want to start with a nice dark base layer. And this time I'm starting with a very deep, dark purple, even darker than this one up here. Um, it's almost, almost looking blue here, but I'm still going to call it a blue purple. I was aiming for a blue purple up there. Anyway, nice deep, dark purple. And then if you see all this nice kind of highlight on the side here, that's just going to be a lighter purple that you kind of either brush on or dot on for some texture as well. You can see some little bristle marks here that I've kind of dotted everywhere for some blending. All right, so we're starting with a dark color and then we'll add our lighter color on top. 
I'm going back to my big flat brush. If you know you like a different brush for trees, of course, feel free to use a different brush or you just maybe aren't comfortable with a big brush, you know, use what you need to. Um, but I'll let you know, I like this brush because all the bristles line up. You can see in a nice straight thin line. So when we start to do our branches, I find this super beneficial for those nice straight branches there. Uh, Ima, welcome in. Thank you for the follow. Doing a quick little painting tutorial here. So welcome in. All right, so let me mix my colors. As I described, it's a nice deep dark purple. So I'm going to my red and blue. And I'm trying to do equal amounts. I know it looks like I put lots of blue there, but I've run out of red, that's why. Got to refill with a little more red. So equal, equal parts red and blue. And that'll get you a nice deep dark purple. Oops. Yeah, see how dark that's getting there? That's our black paint there, and that's our purple. I'm a hello. If you prefer a different name, I'm kind of reading just the first part of your name, let me know. But yeah, if you have any painting questions, feel free to let me know. I am doing a painting tutorial right now, so I'm kind of walking people through step by step how to make this painting. All right, so if you're a little scared about this first step, again, my suggestion is start small. You can always make things bigger, right? So that's why you can see I very just quickly put a little trunk on there because I know I'm going to make the trunk a lot bigger. <laughs> so I like to start at the trunk. I like using the thin edge of the brush as I described earlier. So you can see I'm using it kind of up and down like this. And I just like to kind of carry it up like this. Carry it up the canvas. Maybe give it a little sway. Maybe sway it a little, a little to the right as it comes up. And I'm going to bring it all the way to the top of the canvas because I want my tree to be nice and tall, nice and big. So it kind of falls off at the top there. Give it a little, little curve as I described. <laughs> Looks like the cabin's on fire. No, it does look a little burnt to a crisp. <laughs> it looks a little like just post fire, like there's some burning coals down there. Oh no, that's not the vibe. That's not what we wanted. <laughs> oh no. We'll fix it, we'll fix it. <laughs> okay, so again, you can see I start small and then what you can do is just make it a little bigger so you can start to extend the trunk a little bit or widen the trunk, I should say. So just by stroking either on the left-hand side or the right-hand side, make it a little thicker. That way you can go nice and slow. You can kind of assess and decide if you like it the width you're at or if you want to make it or if you want to stop rather, keep it a little thinner, you can do that too. In terms of the bottom, you can see I was a little messy there. I'll do a little more detail there. Just using the thin edge of my brush, you can kind of start to go the other way from up to down. And essentially you're kind of making like mini branches down here, but you're just making the roots. I think of them as mini branches though. You're just kind of extending a little bit, maybe curving a bit and then ending off very fast. Because these roots are, you can see, kind of separating from the tree, but we're also going to cover with a little bit of snow as well. We want these roots to be a little covered with snow. So for now, they'll look a little messy. But yeah, think of them as little mini branches that just kind of poke out from the bottom. And they're either kind of going a little right on the right-hand side of the tree or curving a little left on the left-hand side of the tree. That name works perfect. Perfect, perfect. All right, so widening the tree. Let's widen this, uh, this big tall branch here as well, just a little bit. We wanna keep it pretty thin on the way up. My rule of thumb is to always go from wide to thin on your way up the tree or on your way um, out from a branch. So the base of the branch is always gonna be wider than the tip of the branch. And we can start adding branches just whenever you're comfortable and ready. So you can see I kind of completed that first one there. I went from wide to thin. Now I'm just going to maybe split this in two here. We can start to do a second big branch kind of coming over here. Maybe it falls off the left hand side of the canvas this time. And again, just stroking a couple more times to widen it out. 
Make it a little more strong, a little stronger. And then just adding wherever, wherever I want to fill up our tree with branches. So usually I kind of work off our main branches, our main two or three branches that we start with. And I'll start to add some branches kind of flowing off of those. So what I like to do is I like to carry my brush up the branch, slowly move it maybe a little left or a little right. Then you got another branch coming off. So you can see once again, starting it a little wider at the base and then allowing it to become a little more thin as we go up. An easy way to do the kind of wide to thin method is to use more pressure and then less pressure on the way up. So I'll describe that as I do this next branch here. So if I'm carrying up like this, I'm going to use more pressure at the start. That's going to spread my bristles and you can see how thick, you know, that's becoming there. As I use more pressure, I'm pressing against the canvas. And then as I move further up the branch, I'm releasing pressure. So less of the bristles are touching and it creates a thinner line on the way up. So pay attention if you can to your pressure. Try more pressure for thick lines and less pressure for thin lines. Otherwise, as I keep describing, you can always um, just kind of go back and uh, add if you need to. If you didn't use enough pressure the first time, you can either use more pressure the second time or just simply add more paint, like widen the branch kind of manually as you will. I'm going to do a nice big branch coming over here kind of reaching across, not quite overlapping the cabin. Allowing a couple thin branches to pop off. Again, very light touch at this point, just to get some nice thin lines. And again, you're welcome to follow, you know, the exact, the exact branches I'm doing if you want, if that helps you kind of fill up your tree nicely, but you can also just add branches wherever you want as well. I just kind of think of the branches either going up or kind of to the left or right. Again, more so diagonal. I don't usually see branches going straight across left or right, not usually down either, unless they're like sagging. So yeah, as long as you're sticking to that rule, branch is kind of just like flowing off diagonally, flowing off of existing branches already. Excuse me, then you should be in good hands because you'll be starting to fill up kind of the top part of the tree by doing that, right? Kind of rounding it out, pretending it has some leaves on it, but it is winter, so there's no leaves right now. And then one last tip I have for you, just to create a nice, very thin tip at the end of your branches, you may have seen me doing kind of like a little flick with my brush. That helps you get a nice thin tip. So I'll show you here. To do a little flick, you just bring your handle down so that your bristles kind of flick off, flick up and off. And you can see how thin that little, uh, little line becomes as a result. Uh, no, the tree is actually a purple. I know it looks black. I'm using this color versus the black is here. Even compared to the cabin, the cabin's like a nice dark brown. It's a little different. I know it looks quite dark, but it is technically a, uh, a nice purple there. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll give a quick minute for that. And then I'm just going to start highlighting the tree. We can even fix up the roots a little bit with a little extra blue, kind of add that in there as well. Little cabin check. Mine's almost dry. It's a little sticky. You can see a little bit of brown came off there. Very minimal. So by the time we highlight everything, it'll be nice and dry for our next few steps. Actually, while I have a second here, I might thicken up my tree a bit because I'm just once again comparing to the original and I feel like I made my tree in the original a wee bit thicker like these Initial branches here are like quite wide. Big strong tree. There we go. 
maybe a little bit of a wider trunk too. And yeah, these are decisions you can make. I feel like at this stage, it's a good good uh, spot, excuse me, to, um, you know, start looking at the whole painting, look at um, sizes of different elements if you want to make things bigger, just to complement each other a bit more, fill up more space, whatever it is. Um, yeah, take a moment to kind of look at your painting, kind of step back from it a bit, kind of be able to assess everything at once rather than focusing in or zeroing in on a couple specific spots. You want to see the whole thing together, see how it's all looking together. Good little check to do. Okay. So as I described, the purple highlight on the side of the tree here is just the same color with more white in it. Um, so I actually need to mix a little bit more. I ran out here. But yeah, essentially we're just making a nice light purple. So I'm mixing red and blue together, or if you have extra from the tree we were just making there, that works too. I just ran out here, so I'm mixing more here. And then I'll be adding some white. You can see it just lightens up the purple, right, into a nice like lilac color. And we can use that to highlight our tree. So for this highlighting point, I um, have switched brushes again. You can see I have my medium round brush. Corny Broccoli, thank you so much. Welcome in. Okay, some nice light purple, as light as you want it. I kind of you know, it's not the lightest purple possible, but it's on the lighter side. And you can either stroke this on, kind of just right on top of the dark purple. You can see it'll rest on top, but also blend in a little bit. If you like the kind of smooth blend, you can see just stroking a little extra will help blend it in a bit more. But what I actually liked doing was kind of applying it and then tapping my brush a little bit just to give a little more texture. It's just another way to blend. You know, tapping your brush in between the dark and light purple does the same thing as brushing up and down or back and forth. It just gives it a different texture. You'll just kind of see your brush bristles a bit more. They'll kind of leave little markings as you do it because it's kind of pushing the paint a little bit and allowing some of the canvas to show through. Um, but yeah, I like that just for like a tree trunk texture, personally. So yeah, totally up to you. If you don't like that, then you can do a nice smooth up and down blend, kind of similar to what we did in the snow. But otherwise, you can see I'm applying and then tapping my brush a little bit. In terms of where I'm putting the highlight, you can see I'm sticking to the right hand side. And of course, that's because we will have our nice cabin window and light coming out here. So I'm keeping it to the right, which is closest to the cabin. You know, maybe hitting a couple of these roots down here, but otherwise trying to keep the left hand side darker. But yeah, it's not a hard rule if you need to do a couple little smooth strokes kind of coming up the, the smaller branches and such. Of course, feel free to do that. Maybe do a little tapping here and there. But again, keeping to the right hand side of the branches. You don't need to go all the way to the little ends if you don't want to. Of course, that might be a little tougher, but I do my best. I just kind of wiggle on a little bit of this light purple. Allow it to pop off a little bit. See how that's kind of, again, becoming a little more three-dimensional? Not as flat anymore. And even though these branches are on the left-hand side, you can still, if you want, highlight the right-hand side of those branches, the side closest to the cabin, right? Because again, if these are rounded, you'll still have a side that's kind of closer to the light. So you can see I'm going up the right-hand edge of the branches on the left. I hope you all don't hear my stomach going. It's just making a lot of noise right now. I did have a little snacky before starting this tutorial, but 
I guess I'm still a little hungry. <laughs> I'll be chowing down right after we're done here, for sure. Ah, tummy, stop. Very rude. Right? Yeah, again, looking at my other tree, it looks like I made my tree, my old tree, a little thicker. So yeah, you have room to grow if you want to make your tree a little wider at the base or even add just thicker branches, more branches, you totally can. There's so much room here to do a lot of different things with. But for now, I'll just keep applying a little bit for another minute or two, just to give a chance for catch up. Chance for ketchup. Tell me, tell me, my goodness. And again, smooth out as much as you want. I know some people really like, like no texture. They just want everything smooth and that's totally fine. Again, I, I try and preach as much as possible. This painting is whatever you want it to be and painting in general is whatever you want it to be. Obviously we have goals and we want to be able to replicate things here and there, but it's kind of the fun of painting. It's just kind of having your own twist on things as well. Okay, and then just to kind of like, not even clean up, just more so cover up the roots, <laughs> just to make them look a little more cohesive with the snow. You can grab that nice kind of deep dark blue either that you were using for the trees or for the bottom of the snow here. They're probably similar colors. And I just kind of sweep a little bit on the ends of the uh, roots. You can either sweep, so just like brushing left and right back and forth a bit like this, or you could even tap to make it look like the snow is a little more like piled up, whatever you want. Just trying to get the right blue here, trying to mix that there. So it looks more like they're they're covered rather than like resting right on top. And maybe your blue looks a little different than the blue you originally put down. That's okay. You can see mine's a little lighter. And if anything, it makes it look a little more bumpy and lumpy, right? It gives a little more texture to the snow. Makes sense. Maybe there's some light kind of hitting off of the little bumps and lumps of the snow. See, looks a little better in my opinion. Not as clean, but like that's the point. It's not supposed to be super clean and like right on top of the snow. It's supposed to be kind of hidden. A little buried down there. Thank you, Vonda. Love how you paint. Thank you. All right, I'll give a quick minute as usual, and then we can move along to ooh, the cabin. We get to clean up the cabin. Ooh, yay! Got to put some snow on there. Got a nice window. We'll start with the window actually. We'll start with the uh, yellow and orange. And we'll add all the snow around. Yeah, not too much left. Once again, I'll zoom you in on the cabin a little bit as we talk about it, and then I'll zoom out when we're painting here. Okay, so yeah, we've got this nice bright warm window here. That's what I'm going to start with. Uh, I'm going to start with this so that we can lay down our lighter colors like our golden yellows, our oranges, make a nice little square out of those colors. And then what we can do is as that's drying, we can start blotting on our snow on the big rooftop here, on the edge, and they're just all along these little lines to kind of showcase little like log logs, kind of like a log cabin look, all the horizontal lines, very messily. Um, same thing with this doorway. I attempted to make like a little um, outline of a door, just kind of using snow as if the snow kind of fell on it there. And then I'll whip out some brown just to give a little uh, like window frame here to make it look more like a window rather than just like an open area. <laughs> 
might look a little uh, a little too open without that little cross for the brown brown window frame. All right, that's how it looks zoomed out. So yeah, let's do our nice little glowy window first. So I have my medium round brush here. I'm going to start with our yellow actually and then move into orange. So I'm on my palette here. I'm mixing my yellow with a little white as I described before. The white kind of helps with transparency. So especially on top of a dark color like brown, adding a little white is very, very helpful. Soda Bound, thank you for the follow. Welcome in. I'm just doing a little uh, painting tutorial as you can maybe see here. Teaching people how to paint this painting I made. So yeah, if it helps, once again, I've talked about like sketching things out first, you know, take this yellow, sketch out a little square or rectangle. That's fine. Maybe a little taller. A little taller. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. It is a log cabin, so maybe things are a little tilted or, you know, not as clean on the edges. Hey! Oh, sorry, the high doesn't work on this scene. I'm so sorry. I need to fix that. The uh, That channel point is a newer thing I'm trying out. So sorry. If we were on a different scene, you'd see a little bun popping in. But hello, I see you're high in chat, so welcome in. Okay, I'm just applying my yellow paint. You can see mostly in the kind of like left-hand side, top left corner. And just kind of dotting it on just to make it a little thicker, just for coverage reasons. You can kind of you know, use a little more paint and just kind of lightly tap it on. That'll help with uh, the transparency as well. Just kind of lightly tapping it so you don't get as many uh, as many little brown spots kind of poking through. But yeah, Soda, welcome in. Again, if you have any questions about painting, let me know even specifically about this painting. This is what I try and do is encourage people to try out some art, try out some painting by teaching them step by step here and there. So yeah, all questions are welcome. Okay, so once you have your yellow down, I was just on my palette there mixing a quick little orange. So by adding a little red to your existing yellow, you'll get a nice orange. And you can start, again, either brushing or kind of dotting that on as well. Just kind of tapping or dotting also helps with control, right? You're kind of knowing where that paint is ending up if you're dotting it on versus brushing. Your bristles might kind of fly off a little bit. Tapping, I would say, is a little more controlled. And then you can tap into the yellow as well to help blend. You can see I'm just blending those two colors nicely together, getting a nice in-between going. Oops. Add more yellow if you need to, add more orange if you need to, kind of go back and forth between those two colors and just kind of mess around in that little window that you've made. Ooh, that's looking good. I keep looking in my viewfinder to see how it's looking on camera. I like that. I love the transition from like orange to yellow just to make it look like maybe there's some different, different lights on in the cabin, you know, warmer and cooler lights. Or just like maybe there's a fire, you know, a little safe fire, a little fireplace on the left. So it's maybe a little brighter. It gets a little darker on the way to the right. You know, create whatever storyline you like. I'm gonna prep with more white paint here. Oop, which I just put all over my thumb. That happens, that happens. You will need some pure white for the snow. So if you don't have a fresh little pile of white, I would probably prep that now as I'm doing. Your backyard, how lucky. <laughs> I hope you like the snow. I hope you, uh, you enjoy that and you're not looking out and saying, I hate the snow. This is a dream for a lot of people being in a little cabin like this. Very nice. <clears throat> All right, we got our glowy window. As I was just describing, I poured some pure white so we can do our nice snow here as well. 
So let me maybe start that just as our yellow and orange are drying. Uh, you can keep using the medium round brush if you want. I would say it's a good one for this step because we have a thick amount of snow, but we also want a little thin tip for our little um, little lines of snow as well in the little cabin here. So first off, I'm going to do that nice big pile of snow kind of on the rooftop. I imagined, yeah, a nice big pile that's kind of caked onto the roof. So what I'm doing first is I'm kind of grabbing a big pile of white. You can see I kind of scooped it. If you saw my palette, they're scooping it right on. And then just laying it either on top of the brown or above the brown. You can do either because the brown is nice and dry now. So if you don't want to make your rooftop like taller or bigger, you can just cover up some brown if that makes sense. Or if you'd rather, you can also just, like I said, uh, put it above the brown too, if you don't mind making your rooftop a little taller. So you can see I'm trying to get some relatively straight lines, but also add a little bit of a wiggle to it just to make it, again, look more like natural snow. I'm really using a lot of paint. It is going on thick. I don't know if you can see the uh, little ridges, but oh, maybe right there. Yeah, that's a good one. I like really adding it on thick, just like snow would be, right? Very, very thick and textured, getting the little, little lines everywhere. And just kind of replicating the same roof shape, that nice kind of triangular shape there. Ooh, nice. Mm -hmm. It's one thing I didn't add was actually little icicles. Soda, you reminded me of that. Your ice comment. Cool, looks nice and caked. Nice and textured. Okay, so it's still looking two-dimensional because we still haven't added that rooftop there. We'll be doing that soon. But just while I have this white, I want to also add our little, like, little bits of snow that kind of found their ways maybe in between the logs of the log cabin. And something I did here is I actually added a tiny bit of blue and gave it a little bit of a mix into my white just to kind of marble it a bit. You know, I'm not making necessarily a light blue. I'm just kind of marbling some blue just by giving, you know, little twists with my brush here, a couple little little mixes, you know? So you can see a little bit of a blue in there. And that way when I go to add it, when I use the very tip of my brush and just very lightly kind of graze across horizontally, you might see little hints of blue in there just to give it a little more of a... I don't know, just a little bit more color rather than having it pure white everywhere. I liked the idea of a little blue. Almost adds a little bit of an icy look, you know? Very cold, icy. So as I described before, in no way am I trying to make perfect little lines here. You can see I'm actually purposely making kind of bumpy lines, adding, uh, or I guess keeping little gaps in the lines. So I'm kind of lifting my brush up, tapping it back down. You know, because the snow is not going to land perfectly everywhere, probably. There's going to be some blowing away, some little angles that are missed. So if anything, I'm purposely trying to, again, make it kind of wiggle along the way, get some little bumps and lumps along the way. But I am, of course, trying to keep things relatively even. So trying to keep my spaces in between those little lines relatively even. And down here, before I start to bring these down, I want to make sure I'm kind of sketching out our little door. So I'm just using the tip of the brush again, just making a little open rectangle, just to showcase like maybe a door that has a little bit of snow on it. I even added a couple little, Little rectangles within there just to give the door a little uh, little shape, a little pattern almost. Okay, so like two rectangles and then almost two half rectangles as if again the door is like kind of covered. It's kind of beneath the snow here. It's, it's not opening up and if it does open up the snow is going to spill in. So that was my idea to make it look like the door was covered. Just bring it right down. And then these, these rectangles kind of cut off about halfway down there. I 
And then I'm just continuing with my horizontal lines and making sure I'm avoiding the door. So I'm just going to stop my line, you'll see here. Stop it when it reaches the door and then continue it on the other side. I can add a little extra snow where the window is. And maybe a little extra snow like on the top of the door. Cute. Maybe I'll add a little bit of that marbled blue to the rooftop as well. I think I do see that in my original, maybe a little like icy blue right here. Just kind of adding it right on top. Yeah, just little indications, nothing major. And it just makes it kind of icier looking. Okay, I'll give a quick minute. We don't have much left though. We have like two, two more steps. Yeah. Just gotta kind of continue that rooftop there. And then we've got our little brown window frame as well. Almost there. And again, a lot of new people kind of popping in. Uh, if anyone has questions about, again, this tutorial, what I do, feel free to ask. Questions about painting. I would say you can join us for our next tutorial. I honestly don't have one scheduled yet, but I anticipate I'll have one scheduled um, in the next week or so for three or four weeks from now. You can always check, excuse me, my about page here on Twitch. I always try and list a tutorial link, a link to the Facebook event page, which will display the painting we're creating. It'll have a date and time, things like that. So if you liked kind of watching along and you weren't necessarily painting, you're always welcome to uh, watch for the next one. Or again, check out my YouTube channel because what I do is I upload all of these to YouTube. Lots of tutorials there right now, so you can always work through my old ones if you're just finding me for the first time. Anyways, let's go on to our last two steps here. We got some light blue that we're going to add to our rooftop here. So let's do that first. So I'm using that same brush, I'm just dipping into the blue and I'm going to mix, whoops, going to mix the blue into some white. I accidentally hit my yellow there, so I'm going to move over here this time. There we go. So now we're really truly making like a very light icy blue. Just plain blue and white, no other colors added, no muting this blue. This is going to be a nice, you can see now the contrast, the very bright, bright light phthalo blue here compared to our other blues we were using. Okay, and what I'm doing just to make it more three-dimensional is I'm going for the very tip top of this rooftop, the little triangle tip. I'm doing an angled line coming down to the right. So what this is, is the right hand side of the rooftop. I chose to make it blue just to kind of allow a little more contrast and to maybe showcase a little bit like of a darker area. The rooftop wouldn't have really light shining on it, right? Versus the face of the cabin has all this light right here. So the blues to kind of showcase maybe a darker snow, kind of like out here, right? We got darker blue and lighter blue just to showcase that. So that's the idea with that one. Do I have any more brown? It doesn't appear so. Okay. All right, not to like rush through this, but we are at the very last step and the last step is pretty straightforward. So I will just go ahead with it. Again, I always like to go at a pace that everyone's comfy with, but at the same time, kind of keep us moving a bit. I'm trying to keep in that two hours. We're just past two hours. So try and finish up here. So last little step I have, at least for my painting here, is just grabbing a little extra brown. So again, we used brown for the cabin. So if you have an even tiny bit of that, you can use that. But if you need to remix it, just as a reminder, it was red, yellow, and black mixed together for a nice brown. Just taking my medium round brush, you could use a detail brush though, if you wanna be even more uh, precise here. Just doing a very simple window frame, just doing a nice vertical line down the center. Ending, of course, at the bottom of the cabin. 
and then doing a horizontal line right across kind of the, the center, maybe a little lower than the center, right? Because the idea is maybe it's a little covered by the snow, right? So if we have the frame a little lower than halfway, we're imagining some of the window is down here underneath that nice, bright, lovely snow. It's as simple as that. You just got to do those two little lines crisscrossing, do a little fix up if you need to. But again, the whole, I feel like look of the cabin is a little messy, a little like slanting here and there. So it's kind of your, your out for, um, you know, keeping things super precise, super clean. You can kind of say it's a cabin. It was homemade. These people used all the, you know, all the wood from the trees and just kind of put them all together. So it's not going to be perfect. But yeah, looks makes it look a little more rustic and authentic as well. Oh, I can't move my chair away. Beep, beep. There we go. I just want to adjust this here. Right, and that's our little painting all done in two hours-ish, a little more. Hee <laughs> hee. Let me remind you to sign your paintings when you're done. For anyone who painted along today, either on Twitch or on YouTube, um, Whenever you're done, I always suggest giving a little signature to your painting just to mark it as complete. I think it makes me feel like a real artist when I give a little signature too. Whee! We're all real artists though. The signature just helps with the idea. Yeah, Dolo, you're welcome. You're welcome. So I'll just do a little wrap up announcements because as I said, this video gets posted to YouTube. So I like to kind of send off our YouTube crew and, and all of you too, if everyone's done painting and wants to, you know, get to the rest of their evenings or whatnot. Um, I'll just say thanks for coming. It's always a joy. Um, as I was describing through the tutorial, I try and do this about once a month at this point. Um, I recently had a long distance move. I moved across the country of Canada. Um, so I took a little break from tutorials for like a month or two there, but I'm going to try my best to consistently keep them going every month at this point. So I would uh, check out any of my social medias if you want to be notified for the next one. Yeah, I'm a, you're very welcome too. Um, specifically, I honestly find Facebook the best place for uh, keeping updated with future tutorials because what I like to do is make Facebook events for the tutorials so that I can display the painting and list a date and time. Um, but it's always here on Twitch. So if you're familiar with Twitch and like Twitch, you can always just check me out when I'm streaming. You can check again my about page on Twitch and I always list tutorial dates and all the supplies needed and all of that. So if you'd like to join in on the next one, lots of places you can check out for that. Um, my goodness, I usually have a bunch of closing announcements and I forget what I usually say. <laughs> um, I guess I always shout out Facebook as well too, because if you want to post your painting that you created, um, I would suggest going to Facebook to do that as well. You can always tag me on other social medias like Instagram and whatnot. Um, but again, the Facebook uh, page has the Facebook event page where everyone who attended the event has already like RSVP'd. So it's kind of a good hub for uh, everyone to post paintings. So if you'd like to post there, feel free. Um, or Discord too. I know again, for those more familiar with Twitch, maybe you like Discord. We do have a little bun Discord community as well. Charlene, you're so welcome. Had fun doing this. Excellent, I'm so glad we can look forward to the next one whenever I figure out the design. That's the thing, I need to make a design first. All of these are original paintings that I've made. Um, so I need to make sure I, I figure out what I wanna do and what I wanna teach for the next one as well. All right, yeah, again, if you gotta go, I understand. So thanks for coming and uh, I'll see you at the next one. Bye.